Welcome again to the AAPA Quick Case for the Month. My name is Aaron Bright from the AAPA Pants Pannery Review and Hippo Education. The idea behind the AAPA Quick Case is to give you a case-based board style question and maybe learn a little bit. I have a lot of friends with me today. I have Tom, who's not a medical professional and should not be trusted. He's our creative director. I have John Maybe. Hi there. And I have Kim Casson and Jill Tanner, our resident PA experts in studio. Thank you for coming. Hi there. Hi, Aaron. So here's the question for this month. A 55-year-old man was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes three weeks ago. He was started on metformin, and he returns to the office today a week later to review the laboratory analysis of blood obtained during that preceding week. The results are sodium, 136, potassium, 4.2, chloride, 101, bicarb, 22, glucose, 105, and hemoglobin A1C of 7.0. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in management? One thing is important to know, there's a lot of numbers there, right? Number, you can swim numbers. around in the numbers. But let's go through, usually we sort of say we should cover the answer choices and take a look, you know, think of what these people are asking. This one is not as straightforward, but right. maybe we should go through the answers, John. Let's take a sure, look let's those. take a look at those answers. All maybe right, you can scroll down there. Thank you very there much, you are, sir. There you are. So let's say, uh, option A, addition of an incretin mimetic to his current therapy. Option B, addition of a sulfonylurea to his current therapy. C, immediate referral to an emergency department for evaluation of acid-base status. D, referral to an endocrinologist for insulin treatment. And E, schedule a follow-up visit in three months. Uh -huh. So I think part of this question is taking a look at these laboratory numbers. There certainly are a lot of them. Yep. Right. So as you uh, well know on the exam, there's a pull-down menu that we can uh, take a look at these laboratory items. But you want to probably have a, a, a pretty good handle on the normal laboratory values so you don't get stuck right. in um, you know the, the things that probably should be uh, considered. Yeah. Routine information. Yeah. But you guys want to take a take a stab at these numbers and and see what you if you got any feelings on. Yeah. Sodium. Normal or abnormal. Normal. Normal. Potassium. Normal or abnormal? Normal. Normal. Uh, bicarb. Normal or abnormal? Normal. Chloride. Normal or abnormal? Normal. Glucose. Normal or abnormal? Uh, it's a little higher than it should be. Hemoglobin A1C. What do you think of that? Well, that's, it's higher than it should be. The guy's 7. A diabetic, 0. so we to But leave. basically, we got a normal Chem 7 there. Absolutely. And a high hemoglobin A1C. Mm -hmm. And this was taken a week ago. What do we know about hemoglobin A1Cs? It's basically an average over three months. Average over three of months. Of your glucose level. And it's going to take a while, as John uh, recently taught me, to have that A1C come down. Mm -hmm. So out of those choices that we had uh, decided on here, I'll just go through them myself. Incretin mimetic. I have no idea what that is, John. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably skip that. <laughs> so Fonurea to his current therapy. Well, he doesn't need another hypoglycemic, do that, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, immediate <laughs> referral to the emergency department for acid-base analysis. We have an analysis of acid-base. He doesn't have an acidosis or, a, no. or an alkalosis. Exactly. Referral to an endocrinologist for insulin treatment. That seems a little funny mm -hmm. because his glucose is fine. Or schedule follow-up visit in three months when that A1C may come down. That sounds pretty logical. Sound pretty reasonable? Yes, reasonable it Reasonable to you, John? Yeah, sounds good. Let Let's choose that. We're going to choose that guy, and we're going to scroll up and check our answer. Our answer is yes. correct. Yes. When you're right. on the website, you can see explanations of the correct answers and the incorrect answers, so enjoy yourselves there. But I think that's a key thing to think about, and like John said, Know your basic numbers, even though you can look them up. You don't want to look up a sodium, then look up the potassium, then look up the chloride. Exactly. You'll be there for 20 minutes. And you got to remember, you got to pace yourself a minute per question about. So anything that you are used to seeing normally, it would be nice to have in your head. And then uh, don't be afraid of uh, there not being a drastic... Um, um, intervention. Thank you. Yeah. A drastic intervention. That's right. Don't be afraid that there's not a drastic intervention. Mm -hmm and uh, choose the most appropriate answer. Anything else to add to that, John? Yeah, I don't think so. I, I think have a so, question. ladies. Dr. Yeah, Dr. Yes, Bright, question. So if, as a test taker, do we, if we don't recognize something, just assume that's the wrong answer, right? If you don't recognize it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not, you know, that that's not the answer. But uh, they're not going to try to trick you by making up some word or talking about it in Spanish, right? Right, right. Okay. So that's an important piece. I think, you know, all the answer options that are listed are actual items that exist either in nature or in biology or even in medicine. So they're actually real entities. So they're not, uh, if you don't know what the heck it is, then you just don't know what it is. I love it. So that is it for this AAPA quick case for the month. I hope you have a fantastic month. Thank you everybody for joining me. Go check out the AAPA Pants Pan Review if it's time to take your boards and we'll see you next month.